Anyway, something went down that I didn't get a chance. Well, I know it went down, but something went down that I, I didn't get a chance to do her. It was supposed to have been the next day I was supposed to have did her, but something else jumped off, which led me to uh, try to reach out to somebody else, but I couldn't because I didn't know their numbers by heart. I had it written down secretly, separate, and some, so that in case anybody got that, they wouldn't be able to figure it out unless they know my codes. And I ain't about to tell nobody my code because I was going to call him up and tell him to go do it. And let him know he's got it. Well, anyway, uh, digest. But the Italian, he said, Hey, man, where you at? I thought you was going to go. I said, Man, I got this other job. going to take a couple hours to do this job, and then I'm going to get on your. Now, I didn't know that they was following me, the uh, government. They started following me after I left that restaurant that day, and I didn't know. Even though I peeped the move, but I was like, they turned off, so they couldn't have been following me. But I still did an in and out. Went up into the mall, walked out the other side of the mall, and got in the car while my boy drove my car somewhere else and leave it sitting there for, you know, several days. Sometimes we'd take him up there to, to like the car lot I had and switch it out or whatever. But I got into the other car and left. I said, now, if they follow me into this mall and I'm going out the other side, they fucked. Because, excuse my language, but they won't be able to uh, catch me if they got to run back and get in their contract. No, that's why we used to do the in and out. Go in one side, come out the other end. We did that in Northland, Eastland, Bear Lane. We did that at quite a different few malls all over. But I go out and get in my car, so I didn't notice that uh, anyone was following me out to the other side, but I like to be safe. So after I got in, we drove, and uh, I said, okay, man, we're going to do this. At that point, they hid my picture, but they didn't have a name to go with it. Because like I said, I didn't tell that guy Italian because I didn't want him uh, flipping on me in case they found him guilty on his indictment. He never knew my real name. He just knew the, knew the name Boom. I think I used the name Boom. Sometimes I use different name. That's not mine, so so can't never fall back in my lap. But uh, at that point, some went down. I couldn't do it. He wound up getting arrested. Then one time came, the DA showed me a bunch of pictures of me, the best friend, Maserati Red, the Matrix, I mean, Big Ed. But, I mean, they showed me pictures of damn near everybody that was worthy of top notch up there on the board. Even when they had, even when they had White Boy Rick pictures up there. I was like, what the fuck he's been to doing up there? They talking about because he ran best friend. I said, no, he didn't. They was all at his court. Yeah, we was trying to make sure the nigga never got out. Because we was going to do him there. I explained it a lot. Of, like I said, I explained it a lot of these people pictures. But like I told them, I never testify against these people. Only those six people I gave you that I will testify against. I could give you some information and lead you to other people, and maybe you could make a case that way, but I'm not going to bring nobody into this situation that uh, didn't, that didn't have nothing to do with me going back to prison now. But y'all said y'all going to give me some time off. i take that, because I'm not scared one way or the other. Shit. That's why when I went back into prison, I went back into the state prison. The uh, People found out later when I was in the state prison that, hey, uh, this man living like Big Dog. He wearing suits and all types of shit in prison. He got people uh, working for him in there. Uh, I said, well, I always did that. Each time I went to prison, I always made sure I was able to hustle money and to get people uh, to work for me. That's when uh, they came up with that down with the crap hat. 
people that uh, was down with me, they was also protected by wearing those hats. They knew that ain't nobody going to mess with with them as long as they got that hat on their heads and that they down with me. Because, I mean, I had some killers on my side that would butcher you real quick and then give a damn if they did it in private or in public. I mean, what you going to do? These guys already doing life in prison without parole. So they was down, even though a whole lot of guys that was in there doing life in prison, without, a whole lot was just trying to live out the rest of their life. But the crew I had, they didn't mind. They said, what are they going to do, throw another life on me? <laughs> All right, that's why I like you guys. When uh, I do leave, I'm still going to make sure that the drugs get up in here. For y'all to keep making this money. But uh either way it went. I was telling them who 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 was, and then when he asked started asking me about who is this guy with the gray hoodie on and them glasses and he was at a Maserati Rick funeral. I look back at them. I look back at the picture. Can you blow it up? They said, yeah, we can blow it up. They blow it up. We still can't see who the fuck he is. But several people that we got said that he was the hit man for uh, different people, this and that. I'm like, you don't say. You know who he is, though. I said, yeah, I know who he is. Who? Tell us. I said, you want me to tell you where he at right now? At this moment? This second? They said, you know where? I said, yeah, he's sitting right here in front of you. That guy's, that's me. But they went and got a magnifying glass. And they finally seen some of the side. They were like, that is him. But why can we match it up with this other picture? That's when they found out Pablo picture. They hit me in that one too. They were like, now we know, we believe this is you. On, on his yacht. I said, yeah, that's me. They said, now, what the deal on that? I said, I, I didn't know y'all could pull it in that club. I mean, that is like y'all standing in front of my face taking a picture. They said, technology. I said, yeah, okay, I, I know about technology. Well, my friends know about technology and all that. That should give me a headache trying to figure things out. But uh, they were like, yeah. You know you lucky. I said, what you mean? Pablo is going to be brown thin, right along with Noriega. And so I said, why? He said, because you know that we got Carlos later. My whole face just drops it. Yeah. He said, Carlos going to testify against them. Noriega... I mean, uh, Pablo was the one that helped brought this boy to become what he became. That's why he was buying all those planes. That's when he tried to start his own island of drug. That's made Pablo didn't like him. Because he bringing too much attention to, to his area. And uh, he was like, man, I might. Uh, and he said, oh, wait a minute, you going to give it? I said, no, I ain't giving y'all nothing on no people. No people ain't had nothing to do with me going down this time, but I'm going to give you what I can. As long as uh, there's people that I don't like, even though I didn't like none of those people, but I mean, people that I want to see to go to prison. Because if they go to prison, then once I get in there, I can do it on myself, me and my boy. My boy has already said, man, when them niggas come through here, man, we butcher them. I said, yeah. I'm going to be butchering them right there with you. It's just that uh, I know I ain't going to get back out again. But, of course, I didn't know about this Rule 35 or something like that that gave me a downward a a, a downward departure from my sentence. I said, no, how y'all going? He said, don't worry about it. We're going to get you a lower time. I said, okay. But still, when I got into the prison system, I didn't think nothing about it. I'm waiting for them to come through here so I could do my thing. One of them came through. We did our thing. The state troopers came down there and took us all in. And of course, my boys and them, they say, hey, man, 
we taking this. You keep your mouth shut, big boy. I said, okay, no problem, shit. Sure. He said, because we think you're going to be able to get out of here. I'm like, what you mean? He said, man, we read your shit. You got a rule 35, a downward departure. We just didn't say nothing. You thought, because we thought you maybe, you didn't want us to know. Nigga, we don't care. If you get back out, back out, we going to still be rolling up in here. We know we ain't never getting up. One of them killed the cop up, up in Cincinnati. And he been in there ever since then. Um, the other one, he did some things too, but he ain't, he, he would never get now. Matter of fact, I heard that, uh, he died in prison. Bad health, old age or whatever. He, he passed away in that, but my other boy, they shipped him to, uh, you are? No, cotton, nothing. No, baby. But anyway, they shipped him somewhere else because he started doing good things. Well, not good. Let me put this one. He just started doing different things. And he was trying to, you know, see maybe he could work something with the people. If he showed that he tried to teach the young ones that's coming in. Now, like I said, we, we all got up in age. But uh, back to the Italian. Now, after I found out that he was being indicted, of course, I went in. I got back out on bond. So when he went in, I was like, I looked around. I don't know how to get anything into this building. If I could, I'd take his butt out right there in that chair. Because he going to give me up. I know he is. But see, what he didn't know already gave his ass up because he should have told me from the very jump before I took that contract that uh, he had been indicted because they've been following me ever since I left that restaurant that day. So I said, okay. So when they seen, well, they heard a name on their witness, I mean, on the papers that the prosecutor had that was being a witness against him, they were like, we don't know this man, blank, blank. It was me, but they didn't ever know my real name. So, of course, this lawyer got investigated. Everybody trying to investigate. He said, who in the hell is this person? They never found out until the day I walked into that courthouse and set up in that box. They said, raise your hand and state your name. When I did that, oh, you homeboy, whole body just said, shook his head and the people next to him was was uh, up on charges too. They were like, and I seen one of them elbow him. Hey, hey, ain't that? He was like, he just ducked his head and shook his head and I told what I had to tell that he uh, did. Yes, he hired me to hit a DEA agent and so forth, but uh, I never did. I never get I never did get around to it because something else jumped off. But when I showed them the picture of the DA on where she parked her car, how she walked to work and then how she left back out and she went to his place. Before this fool found out that that was a DA agent. You'd been down with her for however long you were. And you never knew where she laid her head, unless she um, um, unless she rented something. But I never asked him what, where she lived. No, I took it from her following her that led me back to her car, and then that car led me to a second car. I was like, "What the hell is she doing in and out?" Of course, she didn't see us following her, and. Of course, at that time we had people working into we had people working in the federal building. So when I gave them the license plate, they ran it. Then they came back and told us, "Yeah, man, that's such and such. She's a DEA agent, and blah blah blah. The cars that uh, she be driving is undercover cars." And this, I was like, "Man!" So when I give all this information to them, they were like. Will you be willing to testify against that 
that works for us? I said, no, I will not testify against her. But I give you somebody that will once you get them. They did get the person that would give her up and he did give her up. And she was trying to give up people too. <laughs> I mean, it seemed like one, one, one domino effect, one fall, they all start falling and telling undercover where they ain't got to go into court and testify. They just had to show that, you know, like they could prove that this person was this and that. And basically I proved that she was this because I had called up and asked her and gave her a name that's a number for her to run. About 45 minutes later, she called back to that number. Of course, the number was DEA number. They was recording our conversation. Thank you.